it's kind of one of those nasty days where it's not really raining, but it's just misting and foggy and I just walked to the grocery store so my hair is pretty much melting before my very eyes. I always try and look nice for you guys when I film these, but these days it's like this is what you get. So I thought really hard about doing a um, best of 2014 beauty video. And as I'm saying that, I think I may still do it. I, it just may not be up until January, which is fine because we, we will reflect on the year. Um, but I'm just going to stick to December for this post or for this video um, because I would need to give a lot more thought if I'm going to go through like top beauty products of 2014. So that may be coming um, in the next couple weeks. Maybe not if it's like, I don't know how I could possibly keep that video under like 45 minutes. So we'll see. I do have some fun products to share with you today, um, and I want to start with two body products. So I talked about Soap and Glory, uh, I believe in my last video, because I got a little um, gift kit from Sephora of their three hand lotions, and it was called Hand Food, and I love them. I have one sitting on my bedside table, one that stays downstairs, and then one that stays in my purse, um, and I use them constantly. I love all the scents, which is kind of rare when you buy like a trio of a product. Usually there's one in there that you're like, mm, meh. but I love all three of the scents. So, and I mentioned like, I never see Soap and Glory anywhere, but Sephora is where they're sold and they have a website where you can um, find out where to buy them. Anyway, since I wrote about them last time, um, they actually got in contact with me and were like, hey, we're glad you like the stuff. Can we send you a little gift? And I was like, mm, sure. Yeah, I love your products. And I'd love to try more. So they sent me um, some body products, which are awesome. So I'm happy to review them for you on here. So even though these were sent as a gift, um, they didn't tell me to write about them. They didn't tell me to do anything about it. So this is not um, sponsored. I wasn't paid or anything. I received these as a gift, but genuine opinions. If I did not like them, I just wouldn't tell you about them. So the first thing is the Smoothie Star Breakfast Scrub. So this has like a pretty bold maple scent. Um, you can see it's kind of used up. Yeah, I mean, maple is what it's at. I believe it says, yeah, great maple scent on the front. Award winning. Um, so this has, I don't know that word, bananas, almonds, and honey extract. So it definitely smells like a breakfast scrub when you're in the shower, um, which is kind of nice. I like those soft, warm scents instead of anything super perfumey or sharp. Um, so the scrub is great. I'm big on like, once a week body exfoliation. So it's getting a little bit tougher to bend over and get like my feet, which really need it. Um, but just all around my body, the dry skin, I can tell, um, builds up a little bit. So it's good to just scrub that off. And then every day, or especially after I use one of the scrubs, um, I put on the Smoothie Star Lightly Whipped Body Buttercream. So I can't figure out what the scent is of this. Um, it's described as pistachio, almond, and sweet vanilla fragrance. So I guess that would be the scent. I didn't know if there would be like a specific name for it. So I, was, I kept looking at the top like, what is this scent? Because it's really nice. It's subtle and soft. Um, sort of like the scrub. This one's a little bit more potent than the um, buttercream. But I originally was like, eh, I don't like the tub moisturizing products because you got to dig in there. And But I ended up actually liking it a little bit better than pump lotions. I don't know why. I think you go through phases of things you prefer, but I like just scooping a bottle of it out and I've got more uh, surface to moisturize these days since I'm eight months pregnant. Um, so I find that it's easier than like pumping um, a thing of lotion and rubbing it all over my body. So this, the smell doesn't necessarily linger throughout the day like some other fragrances, Laura Mercier's um, Fig, Fig and something body cream that lingers the entire day, which is really nice because that's also a soft, easy to wear scent that won't be like abrasive to anyone that's sensitive to smells. So this one, like I can't necessarily smell it on me by the end of the day, but I'm kind of fine with that. I don't really need to smell my own lotion um, on myself, but it is nice and hydrating, no greasy residue, which is key. If I'm gonna cover my whole body in lotion, I do not wanna put my clothes on later and feel every fiber of my jeans and t-shirt like Ugh, I can just feel it sticking to me. I hate that feeling. You won't have it with that. So, like I said, two Soap and Glory products that I'm really loving this brand. So it was really fun to try a couple more things and um, 
yeah, if I find more that I love, you can guarantee I will tell you about them. I have the rest of my favorites in this beautiful little container that my mom got me for Christmas. Um, it's from Hobby Lobby. It was $20, but it was probably like 50% off because basically everything in that store is 50% off constantly. So anyway, it's cool. So I put them all in there. Sneak peek. Okay, I have been wearing just a tinted lip balm pretty much on the regular these days. And I talked in my last video about the fresh sugar lip treatment that has a bit of a tint to it in the color ruby that I got also in like a little gift kit at Sephora. Um, and then I loved it so much, but it was, it's bold. Like it's not a sheer-ish lip color. And as I'm getting more and more pregnant and I'm dealing with some sciatic nerve pain, so I'm just wearing like tennis shoes and trying to lay low my uh, makeup, um, amount is going like which you know whatever so I'm going for more sheer uh, lip colors so I grabbed the rosé color from fresh so this looks like that so you're gonna think mm, that looks bold no it's pretty sheer when you put it on you'll have some color so your lips don't look completely dead or pale like mine tend to do um, but it's also hydrating it's not gonna like the thing about the ruby one, which I still like, and I still like that for a lip color, you can't just like put that on all willy-nilly and then just like go about your business. You kind of need to make sure like, oh, well, did I stay within the lines? And this one is gonna give you a little bit more grace if you're like, okay, I need lip color, and you can just like do your little check and make sure you didn't go anywhere and you're probably fine because it's not as bold as the ruby color. Um, so, definite uh, favorite. <laughs> And then my other one that probably of the two, like this one would be on top and this one would be on bottom, is this beautiful little thing from Anthropology. And the packaging's kind of weird because it doesn't have the name on it. I wish it did. It's on the, like, box package, but I don't know. They're probably like, you should memorize it, but who has time for that? So it is a also a tinted lip balm and looks like a nice pigmented color. Don't be deceived. It's actually rather sheer. I'm wearing it right now. So you can see it has a little bit... Of color so my lips don't match my skin which they typically do um, and hydration and that's kind of it so it doesn't do a lot for you and if that's what you want it's perfect if you want more color I would say go with one of the fresh sugar lip treatments there's they have a ton of colors so I would look into any of those I talked recently about my favorite pencil liner which was the black one by Cynthia Rowley that was available in Birchbox and it's no longer available by itself. It only comes with like a little sky blue shade. And a couple of you commented and said you can buy it on the Cynthia Rowley website, which I never actually made it to the website to look, but I'm going to take your word on for it. Um, but this is so stupid, but I'm like, I don't want to. I don't need to order it online. Like, I don't know. That's, isn't that dumb? I order so much online. But I kind of was like, I need to find one then. Oh, shoot. Oh, there it is. Um, I was like, I need to find one that I can just get easier. Plus, I get points on my card at Ulta and Sephora, so I'd rather buy, or like, if I buy on Birchbox enough, I can earn points. Or if I leave reviews on Birchbox, I can earn points to get products. But anyway, I'm looking for something that I could buy at Sephora or Ulta so I can get points for it and then get rewarded later. And anyway, I found a dupe. I found the best liner for your top lashes like best I was looking for the best black eyeliner for your top lash line um, or bottom or whatever but I was focusing on my top lash line because I don't wear black on the bottom that does not smear when you use an eyelash curler because I'll put my line I put my shadow on I put my liner on and then I tend to curl my lashes a couple times as I'm applying mascara otherwise they would be like this so the one that I read the most reviews about that I don't have in my hand because I returned was the Marc Jacobs eyeliner. I'll include the exact link to what I'm talking about because I'm sure there's more to that name um, in the post. And every review I've read of that was like, this is the best eyeliner in history. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. It was the worst eyeliner I've ever used. The worst eyeliner I've ever used. I don't know if I have like weird eye needs. It's terrible. It's smudged right off and I don't have issues with that. My eyeliner never moves. And I put this Marc Jacobs stuff on and I'm like, what is my problem? It's like disappearing before my very eyes. I hated it so I went right back to the store. I gave it like three days because I'm like, okay, maybe it's like the initial, 
I need to sharpen it and get it. I ended up not sharpening it. I think it was a manual twist out anyway. Anyway, it was terrible. So I'm sitting here like, man, these are my favorite liners. The Metallic Umber and the Sepia liners by Stila. They're twist up as well. And I was like, ugh. I've never tried the black one. Let me give that a go. And I only use these on my lower lash line. Or I use these two colors on my upper lash line if I'm just doing mascara because it's a softer look than having like black liner and black mascara. So I got Stingray, which is their black color. They have like a shimmery black one as well, but I was going for the matte look. This liner is fantastic. It does not smudge. It does not um, disappear or get knocked off by your eyelash curler if you do what I do with eye makeup. Um, it lasts all day. It doesn't go anywhere. It's just as great. And I, I, I don't know why it didn't occur to me sooner. So um, these three, I usually have been leaning towards using black on my top lash line, always, always. And then I've been doing sepia on my lower lash line just because my makeup's getting a little bit lighter. But if I want a little bit of a darker look, I'll use the metallic over. So um, I also have a gray Stila, what are these officially called? Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner. Um, that I use sometimes as well. So I have a feeling my collection of these is going to be growing because they're the best. The Cynthia Raleigh one is stinking good too, and if I could get my hands on it easier, I would. But this I can buy at Ulta or Sephora, so I will be doing that. Another eyeliner is the Kat Von D Ink Liner uh, in Trooper. Is that the name of it? Trooper? Eh, I guess. Anyway, it's just the jet black one. It is a felt tip liquid liner. Does that get clear? It's wonderful. If you're looking for a felt tip liner, look no further. In the past, I've used sort of the brush tip I just started loving for really inky and perfect cat eye, the YSL Baby Doll eyeliner. I think it's Baby Doll. Um, that is a great brush liquid liner if you want a felt tip which allows you to be a little bit more precise and if you have issues of there being a little bit of a gap between your lashes and your liner you can just lay the felt tip on the side and fill in any darkness there it's a little bit easier than pressing a pencil against your lashes um, so that's what I like to use this for especially but it's also extremely precise if you want to do a cat eye with it as well so last time I talked about I'm, I don't know why I keep referring to all the products I talked about last time but the Mac uh, not M-A-X, M-A-C, apostrophe S, Zoom Fast Black Lash Mascara that I got in like a little sample size in a box from Nordstrom. And I really liked that, and I have not been able to get over to the mall to pick it up. And I don't want to pay for shipping, because I don't want to order it online. So, I was at Target, like usual, and I saw this Maybelline Lash Sensational uh, Mascara on the end cap. It was new, and I was like, eh. Give that a go. It'll be cheaper. Maybe it'll be fine. I don't really like these brushes. Um, I don't mind that it's curved, but it's like the really plastic ones that are, I don't know. I find that they tend to be clumpy. I prefer the traditional bristles that are a little bit more, mm, I don't know, flared out. But this is good for like the final coat of Impact Mascara, which is what I was using the MAC Zoom Fast Black Lash Mascara for. So my intention was to find something maybe a little bit cheaper, easier to get my hands on that's equally as good as that MAC stuff. Is this equally as good? No. Is it sufficient? Yes. Um, I will probably hold off on buying the MAC one unless I'm there or get a gift card or something um, and just use this up. But it's heavy, so I wouldn't use this and I wouldn't recommend using it for like your layers of mascara, I would just use this for the final one if you need like serious dark lash impact. My hands are getting involved with this conversation. Let's talk about the disappointments. Also at Target, I saw this Rose Glow by Revlon blush. I thought, man, that's really pretty. I don't know, it might be a little shimmery, maybe not. And so, you know, I opened it and I was like, okay, we've got a lot of different tones in there. Like this could be really beautiful put it on and it was as if I put on like a glue stick full of glitter. It's so much more shimmery on your face than it is in the palette. I don't know how it happens if there's like a hidden layer of glitter in there. It's 
terrible, which is really a shame because it's a beautiful, soft color. And you know what's hard to find in a drugstore? Blush. It is hard to find beautiful, um, different varieties of color of blush. They all look chalky and flat. So the reason I was drawn to this one by Revlon is because you have different tones in there and I don't mind a little bit of highlight. And I thought this kind of all mixed together will be a really pretty multi-dimensional blush color that I can then recommend because I get a lot of requests for drugstore stuff. But I had such a hard time finding one that looked appealing or pretty. This was the best of the bunch and it's terrible because it's like a glitter party on your cheeks. Don't buy it. I will continue my hunt if you have a favorite beautiful drugstore blush, I'd love to check it out because I, I really had such a hard time. I went down, up and down the aisles multiple times like there has to be a better blush selection and there just wasn't. I was killing time in Nordstrom with my sister when I was home for Thanksgiving and um, I picked up a hair mask that was so terrible. It was such a stupid concept and I don't know, it was so gimmicky which is why I bought it. It was in this packet. I'll try and find it online. I don't know. Hopefully they don't sell it anymore. It was uh, like a pouch like this big and it was a hairnet. There was a plastic hair cap included in the pouch and the deep conditioning product was already deposited on the hair cap. So what you did was you open up the pouch and you get in the shower and you wash your hair and you squeeze it out a little bit and then you tie this hair cap on and then mush all the product into your hair. Here's my question. Why on earth aren't you able to put it on your ends, which is typically where you need deep conditioning, instead of just pressing it under your scalp? It's, it's, it was so gimmicky that I was like, I have to try this and see what the heck this is all about. The packaging was really cute. That's what sucked me in. It was like seven bucks. I'm like, hey, I'll try it if it's awesome, cool, if it's terrible, whatever. It's so bad, I can't even like bother talking about it anymore. Anyway, so I was in there, and I also saw this Topshop blush or bronzer. And so I opened it up and I was like, man, that looks like a nice light bronzer for winter. Like it's a, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit orange. And I thought that in the store, I thought this is maybe a little bit orange, but it looks like it would go on sheer enough and be a perfect balance for, um, very pale skin, which I have. The brand is Topshop, oddly enough, which is probably what you know as a clothing store, but they also have their own line of makeup, which you either can permanently find in Nordstrom or it was just in Nordstrom for the holiday season. Anyway, I would give it like on, on a grading scale, I don't know, I'd give it a C. Yeah, I think like a solid C, perhaps a C minus. Anyway, it doesn't, it didn't look excessively orange to me. It kind of wears a little bit orange. Um, and I like to contour a little bit with my bronzer, so I'm not going for like a light, flush but maybe I should try that anyway I was fo focusing it like under my cheekbone a little bit to try and give my full pregnant face a little dimension um but I didn't like the way it wore it kind of as soon as you brush it on like that's exactly where it stayed it didn't blend in nicely maybe it just isn't like a good product it might be cheap I think it was like 18 bucks anyway it just disappointed me I'd give it a C it was I wouldn't buy it. I've been using the Anastasia Brow. Oh my gosh, I've sharpened it too much and I don't know the name of it. It's an eyebrow pencil and it comes with a spoolie on the other end. Um, I'm sure the shade is like br blonde or something. Oh, taupe. Um, so I love this eyebrow pencil. Love this eyebrow pencil. And I was like, maybe I'll find something cheaper. So I was in Sephora and I got their waterproof eyebrow pencil in neutral gray brown. The gray was intriguing to me because I was like gray. Um, it is tiny, a tiny little pencil, which initially I was like, oh, that seems like a lot of work, you know, to try and like fill in everything. Um, my eyebrows are pretty thin and naturally, so I needed a little bit of work. And this pencil, uh, you sharpen, but once it dulls down a little bit, it's got a nice um, width. This actually wears a little bit oranger and neutral gray brown does not get more cool, I think, in terms of warm and cool than anything else. So I thought, well, this will be the best color. It wears a little bit orange. It's not, and it comes with this little plastic worthless tool on the other end, I think. So it was cheap and so it was cheap. It did not deliver as well as the Anastasia. An Anastasia. So. Once I run out of this, which I'm really close to, um, I'll just go ahead and buy one of these again. 
Okay, so those are all the beauty products I went through, um, or my favorites for the month of December. Some new stuff. Um, and yeah, I love sharing these with you guys and giving you reviews. So it's always, I always enjoy watching videos like these because I'm like, okay, what does she say about it? Because I typically agree or disagree with her opinion. So um, I do hope this is helpful for you. If you want to see any other of my monthly favorites videos, you can find those on my YouTube channel. And like I said at the beginning, I'm thinking about doing like a best of 2014 video. So you may see that in January, but um, we will see if I can get that done. Thanks for watching. Thank you.